that we should have a pro-voter environment in the state of Ohio, and we have been making headlines for everything but. Uh, really starting in 2011, many of you may remember uh, when the current Secretary of State took away the authority of local boards of elections to mail out absentee ballot applications. So a battle ensued and then it was settled, you know, and he had to mail out those absentee ballot applications. For me, as Secretary of State, that job is to expand and protect the access to the ballot box. And it shouldn't be about trying to rig the system for one party or another. We should compete for the voters but let people vote. And that is my basic premise, that for me it doesn't matter how people lean. They can be red or blue or somewhat in between. I just want people to vote. And the fact that we have almost 8 million registered voters in the state of Ohio, and, and, and year after year we're trying to figure out how many people are going to turn out in the primary, if people will turn out in the pri primary, especially in a non-presidential election year. I mean, I would love to have a moment in the state where the headlines say Ohio is the gold standard uh, for elections and that we have 100% voter participation. The difference between me and the incumbent is that I believe it is the job of the Secretary of State to drive votes, to use the 88 board, boards of the county boards of elections and those professionals, not to drive them to who to vote, but to create that kind of environment. Not much difference from somebody who owned a business and needed people to come into the business to drive revenue, but well, our business is voters. You know, so I would not do anything that was not a pro-voter. On the, on the business side, again, the Secretary of State's office can be a partner with the governor's office, a partner with, with, with other entities, be they for-profit or not-for-profit, to create an environment that cultivates businesses. I, I, want, I really want to do that. I got a chance to, to uh, sit with some very young entrepreneurs uh, in the city of Cleveland. There are about 15 of them, and they talked about how hard it is for them to get mentors, for example. I could see the Secretary of State's office being a match, a matchmaker, if you will, to get corporations that are more experienced to be mentors to startup companies. That's one example. So for me, the democracy is stronger the more people who vote. And that has been my premise <coughs> all along, ever since I've started this race. If you look up anything that I've done, it has always been pro-voter and, and not, I'm not concerned about the party affiliation. In terms of redistricting, too, I would be, continue to be a strong proponent of that. Many of you, of you may know that in the last General Assembly, in a bipartisan way, which might be surprising, four state senators, and I was among that, those four, got together in a room and said on redistricting reform, what can we agree on, knowing that none of us are going to walk out of here 100 percent happy. And we did that. And our redistricting reform piece, SJR 5, passed in the last General Assembly 32 to 1. That is unheard of in this environment and especially on an issue like that. Now, unfortunately, it didn't uh, get a hearing in the House. We have since reintroduced that bill and it really hasn't gone anywhere. But the legislature should deal with that because the ultra-partisanship that we see in the legislature and also in Congress is really a reflection of how those lines are drawn. That elected officials sometimes really never get to the governing, especially if you have to always think in the back of your mind, I'm going to be primaried by somebody. And I'm going to say I, I believe that my colleagues on the right is more on the right than it is on the left. But if you're always trying to worry about your next election and you never get a chance to govern in a way that lifts all people, I, I will continue to push for redistricting reform. And I believe we need mid-decade redistricting reform. If we're going to move to the positive, why should we wait in the state of Ohio until 2021? We should do something right now. And if the legislature doesn't have the courage to do it or the will to do it, then the people should do it. Well, you talked about increasing the uh, 